because I had a square root of a negative sign. Uh -huh. I, very good. So I get plus or minus root I, or I root 5. So this counts as two answers. This, these are imaginary answers. Okay? That's what it is. Now she was here. Okay. I marked three kids absent last period, and I'm sitting there walking around helping on myself. I'm going, when did you get here? Like, been here the whole time. All right. Friends, how do you feel about this problem? Is this okay? Yeah, and that's what you call a dramatic text. Yeah. Yes, sir. 13. Got it. Thanks for asking about 13. And I understand why you would ask about it. You have a quantity squared equal to zero. Hey, friends, when I say quantity, I have something that's in parentheses that I'm squaring the whole thing. Root, root? Root, root? Okay. Okay. I, well, I, I, I could write x minus 4 and x minus 4 twice and then multiply it out. I could. But, so think about this. Let me come off over to the side. If I had this, would you feel good about root root there? So let's pretend this is just like a letter. Is that okay? Because the whole thing's squared. Root root. Plus or minus zero. Square root of zero, zero, right? Add four. Now, here's kind of a funny question. Four plus zero is what? Zero, what? Four. Four minus zero is what? No, the answer is just four. Like if I add, if I add nothing to four, I still get four. If I subtract nothing from four, I still get four. Right? So, I mean, that's a goofy answer. Four plus or minus zero. Like, if you put that as an answer, I'm so proud of you. But honestly, the answer is just four. But I'm proud that you did that. What else did you see that I could help you with? Okay. 15. I'm actually going to write right down here because it's going to be the same exact idea. I have a quantity. When I say quantity, that means it's squ something that is in parentheses. Agree? Do you feel I could go root root right now? No. It is 49. I agree. But hang on, hang on. If I go root root, don't forget the plus or minus, right? Does this side become 3x plus 1? What is the square root of 49? You got this? 7, 7. What do you think? Well, so now we have 3x plus 1 equals a plus or minus 7. So ready? I'm going to go subtract 1 from both sides. Okay? So right now, this is going to give me 3x, and then I have to realize I have negative 1 plus or minus root 7. Okay, hang on. If I go negative 1 plus 7, what do I get? 6. If I go negative 1 minus 7, I get what? All right. All right, so, so I kind of went off a little bit here. So I still have this. Whoa, hey, hey, go away, go away. I still have this. I still have this three x right here. So right now, I know I kind of went out out of order, but I get this and I get this. So that's just going to give me x equals two, and this gives me this. Okay, that's a tougher problem. I agree. But I think in time and practice, we will learn them. Is there anything else I could help you with? Anything else we could do? Do what? No? 
Good. Sorry, getting a handful. Do what? Cinco. Five, five, five. The five root or three root twenty-eight. That one. All right. Can I break twenty-eight down to four times seven? And why would I choose four times seven and not two times fourteen? The highest perfect square. Like it. Well, it's the square root of four, friends. Multiply the outside, six root seven. Done. Anything else? Anything else? We're good? How much? One? Root 27. I'm going to break this down to 9 times 3. Is that okay so far? Square root of 9 is 3, so I get 3 root 3. Done. All right. Can I take you on a little adventure? Oh, no, not quite the song yet. All right. So, friends, I'm going to say AX squared plus BX plus C is equal to zero. Okay. Now, I'm going to go a little bit above this class, but I want to show you mathematically how something could be proven. Okay. I want to solve for X. And I have A, B, and C in there. Okay? First step. Do you see what I just did? Yeah. Now, I have X on the left side, but I have an X squared and I have an X. Right? Okay. All right. I don't want to have a lead coefficient. And you do not need to write this down, my friends. Okay? So, there's a process called completing the square you'll see later. Completing the square means I take half my middle term. If I take half of a fraction, I get b over 2a. And if I square b over 2a, I get b squared over 4a squared. So if I add that to this side as well, I get to there. Okay? I'm going to clean this up a smidge. I want to combine these fractions together. So I'm going to multiply by 4, 4, A, A. So this is going to give me B squared minus 4, A, C, all over 4, A squared. And if this is above you, it's okay. But if I go root, 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 we don't forget the what? Plus the minus. So the top is going to stay as B squared minus 4, A, C, the bottom, what's the square root of 4? What's the square root of a squared? Now, I said I want to get x by itself. So I'm going to subtract this. And those are the same things. So my friends, congratulations, you just watched a mathematical proof, okay? So x equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. All right, I have to turn this projector off, and you're going to hear a little song, and I apologize in advance for the little song, but I'll come off that speaker's over there. I head back here. See if I can do this right. Okay. So, friends, 
what I had done is I just took AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero, and I solved it to get X equals negative B plus or minus square root B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. There we go. Again, I apologize. Okay, have some more people sing it now. Maybe some more people sing it now. Oh boy. I tell you, it's it we just can't make things up like that. So now let me show you what that song actually means for us in solving our problems. But I'm going to sing that song every time we use it now. I'm sorry, Jack. The entire 50 seconds? No, only one time. <sighs> Not multiple versions. All right. So, ready? X is equal to negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Okay, that's not the answer though, right? That's the formula. Okay, it's equal to zero. Agree? What number is in front of X squared? One. All right. Now, so AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero. Friends, what's my A value? One. Just one, just the number. What's my B value? Negative four. Negative four. What's my C value? Negative two. Negative two. Okay, let me just stop there for a minute. Do we feel okay so far of what we've done? Okay. Stone, did you hear that song before? No? I had a different song in mind. I had this song. I'm expecting to hear your version. No, it's a different, it's a different, for a different, it's a different question. Oh, okay. All right. So, friends, I'm going to do something here. I hope this makes sense. All right. My B value, we're going to make yellow. So, I'm going to plug B in here. I'm going to plug B in here. Is that okay so far? I'm going to make my A value green. Notice on our equation, A falls here, and it falls here. And I'll make my C value blue. falls right there. Okay? I have three different colors. Agree? Agree. All right. So, let's see if we can make this work. Notice, X is equal to negative B. What is my B value equal to? Negative 4. Okay, now, let me just pause there. If I have a negative negative, what do you know is going to happen to it? It will be positive. Good. All right, now, when you plug B squared in, anytime we're going to be multiplying here, I'm going to put things in parentheses. My A value is 1, my C value is negative 2, my A value is 1. Okay, now, friends, I put parentheses when it's being multiplied. When it's being added, we could probably... Well, let's just say, actually, let's do that. Anytime I plug something in, I'm going to put it in parentheses. That way, we're not going to eliminate signs. Okay, friends, just look what we have written. Do you feel comfortable with what we have written on the board? Why things plugged into certain locations? We have A, B, and C. We have a location of A, B, and C in the quadratic formula. And so let's work it. What is negative negative 4? 
positive 4. Plus or minus? It's false. Yeah, it's both. What is negative 4 squared? So negative 4 times negative 4. 16. 16. Thank you for having the sign right. Minus. Ooh. Okay. Negative 4 times 1 is? Uh, negative 4. Negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 2 is? Positive 8. Agree? Yeah. So this sign changed. All over 2 times 1. Two times a, which is two times one. Uh, Sixteen added to eight. Okay, so we have to realize I can break root twenty-four down to four times six. I didn't choose three and eight because four is the biggest perfect square. Agree? Mm -hmm. So I get two root six. So I'm going to replace this with right here. So I'm just going to bring it off to the side. 4 plus or minus 2 root 6 all over 2. Anything that is outside can reduce. So 2 goes into 2. 2 goes into 4. So my answer is x equals 2 plus or minus square root 6. Okay. This is a different thought process, but, but this is a formula. Formulas are proven to work. Like if I wanted to find the area of a triangle, I go one half base times height, regardless if you know what base and height are, you know there's a formula. If I wanted to find the area of a circle, it's pi r squared. Okay, if I wanted to find the area of a rectangle, it's length times its width or, or base times height. If I wanted to find the area of the square, it's the side times the side. If I wanted to find, you know, there's different formulas that we know that work. This is the quadratic equation. It works. It's called the quadratic equation. It's called the quadratic formula. It works. Okay? This is my answer. X equals 2 plus or minus root 6. Okay? That's my answer. This answer was a problem. If we went to factor this problem originally, we would have put prime because it won't factor. But it does solve to 2 plus root 6 and 2 minus root 6. Okay? Now, friends, I know it's a goofy song. I get it. But there's places on this formula that sign errors take place very easily. Because you try and do too much in your head. Or you trust your calculator too much. You go, oh... I have negative 4 squared, so you go to negative 4 and squared on the calculator, and the calculator gives an answer of negative 16, even though you know that a negative times a negative is a positive. Okay. May I move off this problem? Yep. Good. Backside. All right. Oops. Too many. All right. So, will you just trust me that this would factor, if I were to factor this, I would get x squared plus 2x plus 3x plus 6. So, I'd get factoring this, I'd get x and x plus 2, and plus 3, x plus 2, which then if I solve this, I get x plus 2 and x plus 3, and it's equal to 0. So, x plus 2 equals 0, so x equals negative 2 x plus 3 equals 0, so x equals negative 3. So I get these two answers. Okay, I realize I did that a little quicker, but we've seen this over and over again. Agree? Yeah, I'm supposed to write this down. You can write that down, but I think, Jack, you know this factory. You might be okay. Cool? Now, if the quadratic formula works, that means if I used the quadratic formula for x squared plus 5x plus 6, that means that my answers should come out to be negative 2 and negative 3. All right? So what's my A value here? What's my B value? And my C value? Very good. All right. 
X is equal to negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Now we have to plug things in. Ready? Ready for Eddie, Betty, and Eddie? All right. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Good there so far. Still writing down. Still writing down. I'll, I'll let you catch up. Notice again, when I plug numbers in, I put them in parentheses. I did that on purpose. Am I going to give you points to do that? No, but I'm just trying to give you a graphic way to look at it that might make a little bit more sense. Negative 5. 5 squared is? 25. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 times 6 is negative 24. Over 2. X equals negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 1 over 2. Friends, what is the square root of 1? 1. Negative 5 plus 1. So it costs $5, you have a buck. How much do you owe? So negative 4 over 2. Negative 4 over 2 reduces to what? Negative 4 over 2 reduces to negative 2. My friends, was this one of the answers right here? Cool. Negative 5 plus 1 is negative 6. Negative 6 over 2 is what? My friends, do these answers match those two answers? Okay, so the quadratic formula works when you can factor it. Okay? It works when you can't factor it. It works when you get imaginary stuff. Good. Hmm. How do you feel so far? Odd? Even? Gotcha. Friends, may I move to the next problem? Ready? Everyone good? All right. Hey, is this equal to zero? So make it that. So I'm going to subtract 20. So I'm going to change this to this. Good. Now, something I can do here as well. I can divide everything by 2. And I bet you I could factor that. That's going to break down to, and I know I'm just jumping through the factoring, but we've done so much of it. Uh, Okay, and I get x, and I get x minus 5, and I got a 2, and I got an x minus 5, I get x minus 5, and an x plus 2. I'll set that equal to 0. So this is the old way we've been doing it. So there's my two answers. All right, friends, the quadratic formula will work if I use the factored method, or if I if I use 2x squared minus 6x minus 20, or if I use x squared minus 3x minus 10. It's going to work either way. So let's refer to this. 2x squared minus 6x minus 20 equals 0. What's my A value of this red one? So 
my A value of this red one. A equals what here? 2. B equals what? C equals what? Negative 20. Okay, notice I have all the signs, agree? And we know that x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, plug it in. x equals negative. What's my b value? Yep, plus or minus the square root. b squared, so negative 6 squared. Minus 4 times A times C, all divided by 2A. Bless you. Friends, do you agree with that so far? And let's go through it. Negative, negative 6. That's a 6, right? Negative 6 squared. Negative 6 squared. 36, thank you. All right, ooh. Negative 4 times, negative 4 times 2, negative 8. Negative 8 times negative 20 is positive 160 over 4. Now, friends, does anyone know what the square root of 196 is off the top of your head? Huh? Square root of 196? Uh, 14. 14! Yeah. Good! Good! All right. Ready? 6 plus 14. Uh, 20. 20. 20 divided by 4. There's one answer. Does that match this one? Yeah. 6 minus 14. You have $6 in your pocket. Something costs $14. It is? Uh, eight dollars. Negative 8. Negative 8 over 4. Negative 2. Is that my other answer? Yep. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Sorry. Friends, is it showing that it's working? Yeah. Can I move to the last one I want to do? Yeah. Ready? All right. I will just tell you that this one won't factor. Okay? This one won't break down. This one we are writing prime. But if I go A equals 1... B equals 4, C equals negative 6. Here comes one last time. X is equal to negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. X is equal to negative B, which is 4 plus or minus the square root, b squared, what's b? What's b? Four. Minus 4 times a is? Four. c is? Four. Cool. All over 2 times 1? x is equal to negative 4 plus or minus, ooh, 4 squared. Uh, Negative 4 times 1. Negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 6. All over 2. X equals negative 4 plus or minus 16 plus 24. 40. 40 over 2. Now over here, I'm going to break root 40 down. Root 40 breaks down to what times what? Can you say it? 4 and 10, right? That's the biggest perfect square, so I get 2 root 5, or 2 root 10, excuse me. Anything outside 
can reduce if it's reducible? So my answer is negative 2 plus or minus root 10. That's what x is equal to. That's two answers. So my friends, I broke 40 down to this. Oh, because everything outside, here, let me highlight it. This was a negative 4. This was a positive 2. This was a positive 2. Reduce everything outside by a factor of 2. Oh, so just 5 by 2? Yep. No, because that's inside. Oh, so. All right. I think uh, page 163, 164. 4 through 12. Try it. See if you can figure it out. I bet you at a minimum you can get me the A, B, and C. 